Hey friends, thank you so much for joining for another amazing episode. But before we get started, I have a quick announcement and I'm going to make it quick, I promise. Now, remember we're talking about the contest. It starts this week for 10 weeks leading up to my 100th episode. Also, we're looking for 10,000 downloads and not to mention the Olympics is right at the end of our contest. So here's the thing. This is how you can win on a weekly basis. What I'm asking is everybody to go subscribe, give us a five star, give us a review, uh, screenshot me and tag me on Instagram at sylviedeu underscore cyclist and you will go in to win that week. I will be going on live, well, I'll be making the announcement Friday on my coaching episode as to who wins the prize. So please share this with your friends, go in and put a great comment and put your notifications on. You don't want to miss out your opportunity to win. And I'm going to have an overall prize for everybody who subscribes from now until the end of the contest. Thanks a lot, guys. And I so appreciate you. Have an amazing day and enjoy the episode. All right, welcome again to another amazing episode of Secrets from the Saddle, all things cycling with your host, Sylvie Dow. And we have two amazing guests today, not just one, we got two amazing women who have something really, really, really cool that they've created. I'm actually part of it and uh, we're, they're going to tell you all about it today. So what it, what it is, is the creation of the Canadian Women's Cycling Collective. And we're not going to get into that right now. I'm going to introduce these two amazing ladies. We're going to hear about their story with cycling. And then we're going to dive right into this collective that is going to change everything for women, right? <laughs> okay. <That's so>. um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So the first... <laughs> woman we have here is Larissa so is right beside us so Larissa Werbicki yes that's yes. right you nailed All right. it first off <laughs> <laughs> I was like Whew. okay so Larissa uh, was born and raised in Saskatoon Saskatchewan and she took up the sport of rowing so where she fell madly in love and she decided that this was going to be a sport that she was going to take as far as she could go so she made it to the junior national team uh, in grade 12, competed in the Youth Olympics, bringing home a bronze, and World Juniors, bringing home a silver. She's completed her kinesiology degree at Western while training full-time on the national team and rowing for, uh, for the University Varsity Rowing Team. In two, 2018, she competed in her first World Rowing Championships and in two. 2019, the Pan American Games, winning a silver medal in Lima, Peru. So I had another girl, uh, Evelyn um, Gagnon, who won gold in track at oh. Lima, Peru. So I was like, hey, unreal, like, that's awesome. Yeah, um, and so, and then from after that, she decided to retire. <laughs> <laughs> well, got lots of years ahead of her for sure. Um, she accepted a graduate diploma in business through, um, oh, she was accepted into it, into the graduate diploma uh, in business through Queen's University, where she's landed her first job in Toronto. Welcome, yes. Larissa. Thank so you. before we get both of the girls out there, we have Whitney Surgeoner. That's right. Yeah, uh, down here as well. She grew up mainly playing hockey and soccer, but started racing road bikes in 2018 and forgot about soccer and hockey. <laughs> We've got a lot of girls like that who just like got into road cycling. Uh, since then, she's competed at local Ontario races. She rides uh, the pro um, one to level in criteriums. And after 10 years as a civil engineer, she's switching gears, pursuing pro cycling. Awesome. Uh, she seeks to inspire systemic change and champion communities in which all people have the opportunity to thrive. I'm current. She's currently compete, uh, completing a master's of management innovation and 
entrepreneurship. Yeah. At Smith School of Business at Queens University. So she started her first part-time job and now she's currently, can she raise and she's hoping to race this year. Aren't we all, but we're all training like hell, right? And just waiting for rides uh, and races <laughs> to enjoy. Welcome Whitney and Larissa and the family dog. Oh, there she is. So, so I just want to welcome you girls in. Thank you so much for uh, coming on and, and doing this episode. This is pretty important. So welcome you girls in. Thank you so much for having us. It's exciting. Oh, yes. Thank you. And I, I should have warned in advance that I do have a dog. <laughs> oh, that's okay. What's her name? His name's Franklin. <laughs> Franklin. She's like, hey, you went out for a ride. Now it's my turn for a walk. <laughs> Like, not so much a walk he just wants attention <laughs> oh well here we can pretend we're all all patting her so yeah. the thing about these two women um is they came together and before we get into the women's cycling collective let's hear i want to hear from each one of you how you got into your sport so larissa it's rowing whitney um hockey, soccer, cycling. <laughs> and so Larissa, how you about you start? Yeah. Um, well, believe it or not, I was probably one of the most unathletic uh, kids there ever was. Um, and so my parents were trying to find me a sport that I could actually enjoy and be decent at. Um, so my, I think it was my mom ended up finding like a learn to row poster uh, on one of the poles in Saskatoon because it's very small. Uh, rowing is really big out in Ontario and BC, but Saskatoon and the Prairie provinces, just because it's oh. frozen for eight months of the year, uh, <laughs> you don't get out on the water much. <laughs> right. So it's more of like an indoor rowing program. Um, but yeah, so I picked up a learn to row class and um, I kind of just stuck with it um, because I was different than anybody else in like school because everybody played volleyball and, and basketball. And I actually had something that was unique to me. And I think I really liked that part. Um, mm. So yeah, I just kind of stuck with it. Um, I didn't love it at times, but um, yeah. And then I, um, I really started to enjoy it in high school and that's where I saw a lot of like my progress is being made. And I, I, I realized that I could be competitive at an international level um, so then grade 12, I, uh, yeah, I just made the junior national team and I figured after that, that, that was something that I want to continue doing. Um, so that's where I kind of how I started and got into it. Excellent. So I, I'm assuming that at the high school level, they started traveling for competitions. Yeah. So we, yeah. the rowing team wasn't actually part of, um, the high school like it is here so it was just okay. a club so it was I was rowing with actually a lot of masters it's where they taught me because mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of juniors um in Saskatoon rowing so I was out on the water with like you know people who are in the master's program and I thought that was great because they taught me everything they knew and um it was such a great environment to be a part of you know I'm glad you embraced that as a junior because some kids would be like so intimidated or feel out of place or like mm -hmm. there's no other kids like this is uncool and yeah. um, and kind of quit yeah no but, I, uh, yeah. I but it. you embrace the the experience because that's what masters do like they uh they, I uh, think share. that was it they had so much mm -hmm. knowledge and passion for the sport um because at that point they're not competing to win they're competing to have fun right Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times. And so I think the passion that they brought and the love for the sport kind of just transferred to me. And um, yeah, I just, I loved waking up. Waking up in the mornings was easy. I was like, I'm oh my God, yeah, I heard those rowing, <laughs> rowing uh, morning workouts were early. <laughs> yes. Yes. University, the alarm was set for 4.30 a.m. by the oh, like, high five. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Oh, well, welcome. So how did you, okay, where's cycling come in, even though <laughs> yeah, so um, I then rode for, um, which was, I was on the national team for seven years, um, and I was on the senior team. Um, I did Pan Ams, and I was feeling pretty burnt out from the sport. I think it was just, mm -hmm. it was just my time to step aside for a bit. Um, you know, whether I go back, it's a different story, but right now I just needed to take a step back, especially with COVID and everything, postponing 
um, a lot of the events. Um, yeah. So yeah, I decided to just take a step back and I, uh, I knew I needed to stay active because training three times a day and then going to <laughs> nothing. I was like, okay, I need to find something. So yeah. um, my dad took me bike shopping and I, he got me a really a nice road bike. So um, that's how I kind of picked it up. And um, yeah, when, especially when I was living out in BC, there's so many nice trails um, and road cycling mm-hmm. out there that it was hard not to fall in love with the cycling. Oh, excellent. You were one of the lucky ones to get a bike at the beginning. Yes, <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so many women took up cycling this year. I'm sure men did too, but the influx of women is ridiculous, especially yeah. here in Ottawa too, because are both of you in Toronto? I'm in uh, Winona, so kind of Hamilton area, just outside of Toronto. Oh, okay. All right. All right, Whitney. Welcome. Thanks a lot, Larissa. Yes. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, so I can definitely actually relate to the whole kind of getting into a sport and not necessarily being uh, with your kind of peer group. So um, I'll jump ahead to how I got into cycling, but uh, how I kind of got into it was actually a group ride um, in the Kingston area with a whole bunch of, um, hopefully they're not listening, but older men. <laughs> they might That's not okay. be called old men, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's um, usually who's riding old, right <laughs> yeah but it was I shouldn't say they're not all old but they were predominantly <laughs> men and um yeah, yeah. and older and uh had many more kilometers than I did on a bike um and they just kind of took me under their wing and kind of uh you know I started off in the slower group um and then one day the faster group was kind of passing us and one of the guys was like, Whitney, grab my wheel. Um, oh, and so I, I love that. Wheel. And then just for that last little bit of the ride, I, I stuck with the faster group and I was like, oh, I like this. Um, and yeah, they were just, it was again, just a social ride. Like we would go for, um, you know, a little hour, two hour ride, I think it was, and then go grab a beer on a patio afterwards. Like it was a very social thing. Um, but that's kind of how I got my, I want to say step up from like full on just recreational, um, or like commuting type. Um, and that was, oh God, that was in like 2016. Um, but yeah, so I can definitely relate to Larissa on kind of like stepping into a sport and kind of not necessarily seeing your peers, but like just falling in love with it and being in a group, um, that were definitely, uh, encouraging. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I started, uh, I've always been into sports. Um, my parents were definitely advocates of, uh, encouraging myself and my siblings to be in, um, sports and at least try them, um, and try music as well. Um, but then Mm -hmm. it kind of got to a point where I was liking sports so much and not so much music. And so they said, if you want to play a sport, you have to play an instrument. So I was like, damn it. Uh, this instrument. <laughs> I think our parents are the same. What'd way. you pick? What'd you pick? <laughs> I was stuck with piano for a long time and I just hated it. I was just like, again, I, in hindsight, like I wish I had to put more effort and stuff because like being able to read music and play music is like, it's definitely a skill I would love to have. Um, but as a kid, it was just um, not my cup of tea at the time. Um, and then I did in high school, I did play uh the alto saxophone which i thought just was like the oh. best instrument ever um wow did i play it very well no <laughs> you're like maybe my parents will think this is a really bad idea <laughs> and you come home and practice on it <laughs> yeah it was uh but you know what I, i'm very grateful that my parents did expose me um to uh you know music am i musically inclined or talented no but i'm really happy that my parents did kind of expose me to that um from a young age um but yeah i kind of just fell in love with sports um i was always quite uh uh introvert type uh kid so definitely for me I was kind of had my nose in the books in school, but then for sports, it was kind of a way for me to have um, a social interaction with kids um, my own age. Um, And I just love sport. I love the kind of schedule, the discipline, um, the, you know, seeing how uh, 
when you put in work, you kind of see the results. Um, but yeah, so grew up playing mainly hockey, but definitely played soccer in the summertime. Um, and yeah, kind of took that uh, as far as I could go as like a kid. Um, and then university kind of kicked in um, mm. and decided to really focus. I, want to say, I don't know if it was really fully focused, but I did go to university. <laughs> I did graduate. <laughs> you can, um, you can. You graduated. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so I did, I did engineering, civil engineering, uh, just played like hockey uh, in a club league. Um, through this, I also refereed hockey from high school. Uh, since high school um, and really pursued that after I graduated while I was in school um, and afterwards and uh, refereed all the way up to the national level. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, that was a uh, 12, 13 year career as a, a official, a hockey official. Um, but yeah, I decided to step away from it, kind of similar to Larissa. I just kind of, it was, uh, I don't regret any of it, but it just kind of got to the point where I just felt like I need to kind of step away from it. Um, mm -hmm. And then the following year is when I kind of picked up biking, because I think it was just, oh. it felt like I had kind of a hole and I just like needed to fill it with something. and. <laughs> Um, cause yeah, refereeing, a lot of people don't realize, um, especially once you get up to, um, like I was refereeing in the Canadian National Women's Hockey League, um, you have to be pretty much as fit as the players to keep up with the play. So I was training off ice mm -hmm. even, um, to maintain wow. that kind of level and uh, officiating. Um, so I was always, yeah, training, I guess, but yeah, cycling is definitely my first endurance sport. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, as you said, I'm trying to pursue pro cycling, so it's obviously something that I'm fallen in love with. <laughs> oh boy. Yes. Yeah. No, it's, it's time to get out of the arena, right? And get out, yeah. get outside. Um, but yeah, like, but I think it's just, uh, it's, it's not only a passion, but there's just, uh, yeah, so much to learn from it. So I also help out with a, um, a woman's uh, mountain bike clinic um, in Burlington. And so that's like, even if I didn't race, I'd still be involved in some form of cycling race. Right. There's just so many avenues, um, whether it be recreational, um, just getting kids moving, commuting with your bike, um, all the way up to um, racing. Um, touring with it like there's just so many things you can do with a bike and that's I think one oh, thing I know we're uh, attractive about it yeah so is it fair to say that you guys met at Queens not at Queens but through Queens <laughs> through Queens okay because this is the net this is the the meat of the the episode is the Larissa and Whitney okay you're gonna tell us, share us how you guys found each other because we're kind of like totally different um, sports and, and uh, businesses, but how you came to decide to create the Canadian Women's Cycling Collective. And I think this is so powerful. Talk about that, girls. Yeah. How'd I, you find each other first? Yeah, I'll start us off. <laughs> um, okay. So through our programs, I think we were both uh, introduced to um, an individual named Andrew Moss and we work with him. He's kind of, I would say like almost as like a life coach, I would say for me. Okay. Anyway. Um, he, yeah, like throughout my program, I would connect with him like once a week and he would um, just open my eyes to different opportunities that he think I'd be a good fit for. Um, he was also really helpful. Just um, I had just retired from rowing at that point. And so I was very like all over the place on what I wanted to do. And so I was in this program and he was just trying to find out what I was interested in and just help me along the way and introduce me to ev whoever he thought that could help me get there. Um, so after my program finished, um, I think it was yeah, end of August, I think September, he reached out to me and he said that he's been working with a girl named Whitney and she's, um, really oh. into cycling and he thought that we would get along and connect um so yeah that's how we kind of got in touch um from then on we uh
started just meeting a couple of times. I don't know. It was just like once a couple, once every few weeks. And uh, we just kind of started chatting and uh, Whitney was the masterminds behind this whole, um, this whole. Yeah. So how did this topic come? How did this, like, how'd you get to this? Yeah. So it was, I think, uh, yeah, Andrew, I guess, knowing, so he's an advisor in the master <laughs> program, and he definitely, I think, saw similarities between us, <laughs> um, which um, I don't know about you, Larissa, but I picked up on on Larissa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, I, uh, I can get along with this, this person. I want to, you know, I want to go biking with her. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was more just kind of us chatting and kind of seeing the joint kind of passion for sports um, and then kind of narrowing in on, um, you know, sports in general are important. I think physical activity, um, uh, but yeah, then kind of focusing in on women in sports um, and then kind of some projects that I'm kind of in the works with and, and uh, researching in my master's program kind of led me to this, um, yeah, I guess potential opportunity, um, especially in this pandemic where I think a lot of organizations are taking opportunity to kind of reset and kind of reevaluate their systems. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so just kind of researching and looking into the cycling ecosystem here in Canada, um, we kind of, uh, I guess, saw an opportunity to just connect some dots and kind of see where it goes. So that's where the kind of collective, um, cause we were really interested. Like I've had the a privilege and opportunity to speak with um, some phenomenal people in the um, kind of Canadian cycling ecosystem. And through these conversations, I was like, oh, it'd be amazing if we could just get like a round table conversation going um, and just invite anybody who's passionate about women's sports and just kind of mm -hmm. um, see the opportunity uh, and yeah, with the collective and it being Canada, um, there's already existing amazing programs going on. Um, but because we live in a country that's so spread out, um, right. I think there's opportunity to kind of collaborate to elevate the sport. So that's mm -hmm. where we're trying to kind of make that connection um, and taking advantage of this uh, kind of new norm of zoom meetings <laughs> i know eh? it makes things more possible <laughs> yeah um we just kind of yeah decided to do this uh zoom and we really wanted it to be um kind of we talked about our experience in sports um and how there have been some you know amazing um uh seminars or um you know women's um conferences and stuff in sport but trying to make something um more consistent i guess or more like kind of follow up on like building and that's the word again right. with the collective it's it's building um and that's why we decided on the kind of once a month um on you know whether there is progress or not it's at least an opportunity to connect and really try to feel like there is um this this community um and whether if the only thing you take out of it is a little inspiration um from another woman in cycling um then be that um but yeah so that's kind of how how it started so it's kind of yeah us i guess discussing our kind of experiences in sports and looking at potential opportunities that we could kind of put our heads together and um, uh, drive something that would benefit um, not just us. We want to, you know, mm -hmm. raise the sport as a whole. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, I think it's awesome because I know I put some ideas forward. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so great. But and it's, and it's funny because you say that I've been in a couple meetings, you know, in the last year where there's like coaches from across Canada came in and we did like a, a six week program. And it's just like, wow, you know, it, it's great to hear what other people are doing and what they're experiencing and how they're um, like, what kind of programs they're putting together and things like that. And then another, and then another one was um, it was another uh, zoom meeting, but not, it was through Cycling Canada and it was another set of different coaches. And I was just like, 
this is, we should be doing more of this collaborative get togethers. Um, you know, since, I mean, it's not like Zoom just appeared last year. It's been around for a long time, <laughs> but everybody seems to be is like, wow, let's all get together now. Um, and uh, there's no excuse not to have Zoom. But so now that you've started, so I think it's month three or four coming up. We just finished three. month two next uh next week oh my gosh is this month almost over over holy crap yeah <laughs> next week will be our third meeting yeah <laughs> yeah that's right the second i make sure it's on my agenda <laughs> no it's not oh it better be there hold on <laughs> 7 p.m right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay everybody if when you hear this you got to um first there's a link they'll be in the bio if you're a female cyclist in canada join because anybody can join female cyclists um and then get on their website once you join you'll get messages about the next upcoming meeting and then make sure you join i think it's first wednesday of every month correct yeah at 7 yeah. p.m uh eastern standard time 7 p.m and i say eastern standard time because we are one of the things like even the little logistics mm -hmm. us trying to figure out a time that would hopefully fit into what can has five or six time zones <laughs> yeah yep so tell us a little bit more about it um so you guys were you met each other you started talking sports so what made you decide to put this together and what was the main driver to to create this because it's it's something that you want to grow. Yeah, yeah I think um, I think feedback is really important and kind of like we could have put our heads together and figured out, uh, or not figured out, uh, developed some sort of program and put it forward. Um, but that's kind of us projecting, um, I guess, our experiences in sport um, and what we see as um, opportunities to grow where with the collective that kind of attracted us to that concept is um, kind of having the community have a voice. Um, are we going to address and agree with everyone? That's not realistic. <laughs> um, but as a, as a whole, can we kind of uh, expand the sport and grow it and try to start breaking down some barriers, um, even if it's one at a time? Um, I think that's really how this, um, again, this collective concept of like the true power of collaboration, um, instead of kind of everybody doing their own thing, which doesn't necessarily impact progress. Um, but I think it can be accelerated if we kind of put our heads together um and kind of yeah so even if it's like um a program in Nova Scotia where they've really uh grown their women's program um even just some tidbits on kind of uh how they achieved that and if that could be applied to pro programs like in other provinces um just kind of not everybody has to bang their head against the same walls <laughs> So like if somebody comes, share, <laughs> yeah. So share, share. So it, I'm, I don't mean like um, like uh, I guess yeah. one thing that sometimes people get a little sensitive around is um, finance mm -hmm. and, and trying to get money to put on these programs. And so it's it's not trying to steal each other's money or anything. It's just trying to say like, hey, like we initiated this this uh, uh, outreach program and it was really successful, or hey, we initiated this outreach program and it was not successful because of this and this and this. So it's like, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't do that either. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Yeah. Or even um, uh, like there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. So it's like if somebody has a, a template that's, you know, bare bones template on how to um, run a small local race, um, why not have that as a shared document? Um, is it going to be in detail of all the like connections and everything? No, but 
even just a bare bones um, somewhere to start. Um, yeah. Little things like that to just kind of share those, um, uh, yeah, resources because mm-hmm. I think it would be amazing to see. That's huge, actually. More events like that. Um, that's just one example that off the top of my head. Um, there's there's yeah. many examples. Um, but yeah, so I guess the kind of the like thing, even from two meetings that came out, um, first of all, just the general, like uh, people kind of introducing themselves. I found that super um, amazing just to kind of, I had no doubt, but it was really amazing to kind of see faces to these like amazing women who are doing phenomenal things um, in Canada. Um, and who should really be showcased more. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, just making little connections like that, follow-ups after the meetings. Um, and, but yeah, through the last meeting, it was uh, kind of just decide or discussed, uh, it'd be really nice to kind of have a, a one point of resource or a one point kind of, where people could log in and the resources would be there. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's what we're kind of, um, Larissa and I are kind of working on behind the scenes on um, potentially having a a link to our website where, you know, members could log in and it would be, you know, here's a folder of templates for races. Here's a folder uh, for templates for outreach programs. Here's a folder for um, uh, just general contacts on saying like, hey, I have some some girls who are interested in uh, trying out the sport. Um, what are some contacts um, of local mm. teams in whatever BC or Saskatchewan or wherever it might be? Oh, that's um, great. Again, this is just me, like big picture, but like I think uh, just at least starting a kind of mm-hmm. uh, mm. one point access rather than um, it being spread out over. Um, multiple different platforms or just general links to say like hey here's a here's a document of all the like um provincial programs um oh and just would direct them to their sites um Mm -hmm. uh so yeah that's just again brainstorming after um the discussions that were had uh last month or this, this month i guess Yeah. And just to add, I think when we first chatted, Whitney and I, I think we, there were so many, I remember a conversation because there were so many, like after leaving rowing and seeing all the little, you know, miscommunication things throughout programs, like provincial programs to, to national programs, like just the, just, there's a big miss. There's a big gap between a lot of these programs that aren't communicated to athletes. Um, And so, you know, there's so many athletes who just get, you know, just on the wrong path. And I think uh, Mm -hmm. even just talking about some inequalities that I saw throughout rowing um, in regards to women in sport and funding Mm -hmm. and all these, all these little problems and the, and they're honestly, they're huge. Like there's, you know, it's even a bike and to see there's only male seats on the bike. Like you have to purchase an extra seat if you want to have, you know, uh, I think that's uh, to me at this point is just insane to see. So I just, I think it's important to get these women together because there's all these little issues. And I I mean, yes, we cannot solve them all, but I think if it's just Whitney and I trying to solve them, like we won't see a lot of progress compared to having a group of women who are all kind of in it to see the same changes. So I have one question. What, when you talked about the gap between provincial and national, and I'm sure that there is a huge, cause like, what do you do after, um, you know, what, what is that big gap that stood out for you? I think, I think it's just, it, is it a training thing, a coaching it, thing, sure. a direction or. Yeah. I think it's a, a big thing would be, it's not being able to communicate to national team coaches would be one thing like growing up through the system in Saskatchewan. And, um, like I, I was like pretty much winning everything, but anytime you'd contact the national team coaches, they would shut their eye because you're not part of the large program. You're not part of, um, like 
I know like the Prairie provinces struggle a lot with that because it's hard to get these national team coaches out to just see one individual or, or certain things like that. But even if, even mm. if you go to perform on the national stage and you do well, there's always like a, yeah, but, you know, so I feel like even just communication mm. and getting, um, just an understanding of what those national team coaches are looking for um, to bring and help junior athletes along the path at a provincial level. I think okay. that would really expand um, the, the base of athletes that they could have on the, on the. National yeah. Team. I see what you're talking about. So it's basically, yeah. What they're looking for to bring this, like athletes up to the national level. It's, it's yeah. also goes into basing like your training after provincials. 100%. 100%. Yeah, to to get to that level and what kind of competitions you need to to hit to get. Do you still you have points? Yeah, like it's. Yeah. Um, I think. Yeah, that I just, would. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, uh, just. I don't even know if it's just like a mis misinformation or disconnect. Or it's just a complete disconnect between a lot <laughs> of the provincial to national levels. I just mm -hmm. think that it could be so much easier. Um. Yet it's, yeah, it's, it's very challenging for athletes. I think junior athletes coming up to find their path, uh, where they go, you know, who, who they train under, like everything. Yeah. Right. I kind of agree. And you mentioned something about equality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is a big topic yeah. going forward, I think. Um, I don't know if you saw Catherine Burton's book on stand. Yes. So yeah. she's a, uh, she's a phenomenal person. So I was, uh, I was fortunate enough to stay in her, um, home stretch. No way. Um, really? Yeah. Um, oh no, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's a, she's a phenomenal woman and, um, the, what she's doing down in Tucson with that house, um, is, is amazing. And I was, mm -hmm. yeah, I still cannot speak highly, um, enough for her, um, and that opportunity I had to train down there. Yeah, really. I'm reading her book and I've also have her on the podcast. Oh, excellent. Yeah. I know. I can't wait. I'm like, I'm trying to go through the book. I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> but so that is a huge topic. Is, is that part, is that going to be part of the women's collective along with the, the disconnect between provincial programs? Um, possible funding what do you see coming out of this like I imagine you you have a goal to hit or um yeah where do you see this going and what do you do you have an idea of what you want it to turn into so I think like speaking specifically to inequality or equality um I think it's intertwined within this um mm -hmm. so it's um like a, a collective's voice speaks volumes to just individuals. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of not necessarily getting all on the same page, but seeing kind of common trends potentially that arise through these conversations um, or monthly meetings um, and saying, well, instead of just pointing out these barriers I guess one of the things I would really like to see out of this collective um, down the line is uh, potentially a platform that we could actually um, try and figure out solutions um, instead of just saying, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem. It's kind of like a, a broken record where it's like, you can only say it's in, there's inequality so much before saying, well, what's the solution or not solution, but what's, what's a step in the, in the, a healthier direction um so yeah i think uh it's intertwined into this collective is it a specific um section of it um i don't know <laughs> i think it's uh um it's something that uh not just females but every individual feels at one point or another uh is being um whether it be uh just not feeling like they're included. Um, so yeah, so through this collective, I think there will be topics that will come up. Um, for example, like Larissa was saying about just the design of bikes and stuff, how they're, they're mm -hmm. still very much designed uh, towards men um, and all those little things. And 
for me, it was through little conversations that I've had over the past couple of years um, on group rides and stuff with women on being like, oh, so it's not just me who has this problem. <laughs> it's <laughs> God, no. Problem. Right. Um, I- and making these conversations more um, uh, uh, co- common and, and mm-hmm. not common, but um, instead of women just being like, oh, well, it's just a me problem being like talking about it. So everything from like menstrual cycles, all that stuff and how it's incorporated into your training and all that, where it should be, you know, a common um, a topic. It shouldn't be like a hush, hush, oh, deal with that um, privately. It's like, no, like it does have a huge impact on your training um, mm-hmm. or things like it. It honestly scares me when um you hear about uh, young female athletes um, losing their period and they, them just thinking that's common um, because they're mm-hmm. training um, too hard or whatever it might be. Again, I'm not an expert in this field by any means, <laughs> um, but I just wanted those types of uh, conversations to be um, much more open um, and in order to continue to fuel the research that's starting to happen around those um, topics that just, um, didn't exist (laughs) before (laughs) yeah I know it's kind of um there's only a couple places where you find articles on female anything (laughs) and cycling it's like female cycling or like cycling magazine so there's I just find that um I'm sure there's got to be more or maybe like you said it should be created more uh research or articles from women for women mm-hmm. on certain things because uh, we can all shed light on, I'm sure at least one or two topics on how to deal with or um, solutions, things like that. Cause in women's forums, oh my gosh, especially on athletes, sometimes it's hilarious, but there's a lot of common topics that mm-hmm. come out. So we're, you're on to your third month. Um, are you going to continue? Like, I know everybody, like you're encouraging more women. We're encouraging more women to sign up for the collective and join on a monthly basis to um, be part of the conversation. Do you have a topic for every month or is it always open? Right now we're kind of leaving it open just because uh, we're still kind of building it, I guess, Mm -hmm. Um, and spread the word and encourage people to join. Um, And even if you, you know, sign in and just sit and listen, um, you don't need to talk. It can just be an opportunity to hear from some people. (laughs) You don't need Uh, to introduce yourself. It's okay. (laughs) You can look like, hi, I'm so-and-so. I like to bike. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) <laughs> that's all that the, the criteria to be part of this is like ride like bike <laughs> um so yeah so it's it's still kind of um building it and also uh kind of sorting out some of the logistics in just um uh i want to be mindful of people's you know uh privacy of information and stuff so still trying to sort out on um you know i would love to be able to showcase um uh, you know, these amazing women who are across Canada, um, but potentially down the line on asking people's permission to be like, hey, can we, um, you know, write a little, or can you give us a little bio? Can we kind of say like, hey, here's an example of uh, a member um, who's, uh, you know, a key part to um, the Canadian ecos- uh, cycling ecosystem mm-hmm. here um, and kind of start showcasing because like one of the topics that um, I think does come up is uh, the visibility of women in this sport. Um, mm. and so I think this could also be a platform to kind of start showcasing like there's there are some amazing women in cycling in Canada. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, everything all that like from whether it be uh, you know um, just uh, uh, group rides like organizations that are just trying to get women um, uh, you know just out on their bikes, having, having fun. Um, uh, like the, the mountain bike, um, women's ride that I run, um, 
all the way to, you know, the national level on these women who, these phenomenal women who are um, representing Canada um, and all the support uh, behind them. So including, you know, coaches, uh, program directors. Um, yeah, like it's, it's, again, I could go on and on about <laughs> all the key parts of um, this uh, cycling ecosystem we have here. Mm -hmm. Do you find that, um, do you think that this is going to be something that the collective might start Canadian projects through? I guess the or one thing I want to be mindful, of, like, I don't want to be stepping on any existing organizations. Um, I want, I would love to be able to, you know, have infinite amount of money and just give out money to programs and just like grow the sport. <laughs> well, that's a project I was thinking of. Do you have a project? Yeah. So like I, it would be to be able to donate. Yeah. There, there's infinite amount of possibilities. I think um, that could branch out of this or um, kind of uh, join up with other existing programs. Um, because yeah, I, I, I want to emphasize that um, it's not to say there aren't existing organizations here mm -hmm. that aren't trying to push um, and do the same things we are. Um, we're just trying to be, I guess, another push. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? You can never have too many programs giving out money to female cyclists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think like, cause you know, there's here, like my club, we have money we give to athletes um, every couple of years. And I know like other clubs, OBC does like a, a junior athlete a year. Um, but that's only one person, right. And one club. So, and there are so many other girls who are going for it that, you know, need the money for better gear, travel, things like that. So, yeah, cool. So we're almost <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously. So that's why I was wondering if you had a bit of um, like, kind of like an idea. Well, yeah, like I said, forward. like, our, our next step is kind of creating um, this kind of, oh, the membership Dropbox, not Dropbox, but like a platform where people can kind of start sharing resources. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we're still kind of like, <laughs> learning as we go to uh like I kind of touched on earlier the importance of feedback so we could push it in one direction yeah. but we really want to make sure that it it um jives I guess with um people uh individuals across Canada um that we're not trying to force I guess women into any hole we want to kind of say like what do you guys want <laughs> let's try and do that <laughs> yeah yeah well, so we're coming to an end now. Do you girls have anything, any last words? We're going to have the links up. And like I said, um, depending on when you see this, you will get information to join the next meeting. And yes, it's for Canadian female cyclists. So if you know, if you're, if you're like a guy <laughs> listening to this, thank you very much for listening. But please pass this link to as many females that you write, you ride with, or, you know, in the community, um, that would be great, uh, for this collective. So Larissa, would you guys have any last no, words? I, I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, yeah. And even if you are just wanting to get into cycling or, you know, from a passport or something, I, I know I'm not a big cyclist. Um, so um, yeah, just feel free to hop in. It's honestly just like a, just a, to be supported and feel supported by women in sport almost. So it's great. Awesome. Yeah, I guess, uh, just thanks so much for having us. Um, oh, well, no, thank you. So <laughs> We're just going to thank our listeners for joining in to this episode. And as always, we ask, we have a couple asks of Larissa and Whitney and I that you follow us on social media. So all the social links will be um, in the description. 
So make sure you're following us. And also, we would love if you go to iTunes and give us a, an amazing review. Right, ladies? We deserve it. <laughs> yes. And five stars. <laughs> so we want this episode to the top. And I would like to thank everyone again. Don't forget to put the notifications on so you don't miss other amazing episodes coming down. And have yourself an amazing day. Thank you. Thank you.